I'm here with Scott Babbage, day two of the Zyke CFT Nationals here in Australia. Scott, you're currently, I think, uh, Australian and international chairman, president, yep, something, president, yeah. everything. You're, you're king of the world, aren't you, really, with moths? Um, and also second in the world's most recently at Garda and leading this fleet after day one. So uh, you know a bit about how to make these boats go. Now, just talk to us about where is the fleet? Where's the class? Where are moths right now? Because we've already done a few interviews today and everyone we talk to as a moth sailor seems to be almost on an America's Cup program or straight out of gold medals. It all seems to be happening in this fleet. Mm. Where does it leave the grassroots sailor? What's the future for this class? Um, there's a big future, bright future. I think there's, while we have sort of four Olympic medalists at this event, um, there's still you know, 66 other boats who who aren't Olympic sailors. There's a lot of, uh, there's a big range through the whole fleet. Um, and you see that on the water when, when this boat's being lapped pretty quickly. But although boats are being lapped and, and you know, there's a big difference in performance, I think everyone's still having a, a really good time. And that's what probably brings people back all the time. It's not so much that they're gonna win, it's very hard to beat the best guys, but you're having a good time while you're doing it. So that's what brings the, the guys at the back into it. What keeps the gold medalists and the America's Cup sailors in the fleet? Um, again, I think it's just because they're having so much fun. There's no boat quite like a moth, um, and and while they're amazing fun, they're still really they still really are competitive um, because the the top you know the Olympic gold medalists aren't winning yet. <laughs> it's a long week, and they might at the end, but uh, it's still really competitive. And it seems to be in this fleet that the our gold medalists are wandering around the boat park chatting with guys who've just started sailing. Which yep. um, I don't know if that's usual or unusual, but it seems like quite a nice thing. Yeah. Maybe it's an Australian thing, maybe it's the guys are just very humble about, about what they've done. But um, yeah, it's a good, a good environment on, off, off the water. Now, back to the, the front of the fleet race-wise, um, you're leading, you've got a couple of big names just behind you. What's the difference uh, between a top five sailor in this world-class fleet and someone that's down the twenties? So w where is it? is it? Is it people skills? Is it fitness? Is it gear? Is it money? Is it, w what is it? Um, gear is important, obviously. Um, but then it's, it's just sailing, so being in the right place at the right time on the water to get the, to get the shifts. Um, yesterday there was plenty of weed around, so it was a fair bit of luck involved in avoiding that. You can't really uh, predict when it's going to be there, so um, avoiding the weed was big and there were plenty of big shifts, so staying in the pressure was important. Um, and then you have to be going fast and you have to be fit. To stay, to stay up with the leaders. It, it seems that um, more and more people are now managing to complete falling tax yep. um, to a, a better or less good extent, but the top guys are kind of doing it. Is that particularly physical? Because I see a lot of heavy breathing after falling tax. Um, not really. Uh, I think most of the time people tack more by mis falling tack by mistake rather than on purpose. Um, and, and now that we're getting smaller and smaller rudders, for instance, that the falling tacks are becoming harder and harder. We're sort of going for for peak speed rather than speed through attack. So the, the foils are stalling out, for example, which makes it really hard. Um, yeah, so while they happen, they're, they're rarer than, than not. And and yeah, it's more, more arse than class most of the time. Right. Um, and just a final question, Scott, speed-wise, we talked about the fact you're going with smaller foils um, for higher top speeds. How fast are moths going right now? So upwind on a nice breezy day like today, 20 knots plus, mm. what will you be doing on your GPS upwind and what will you be doing downwind? You're probably seeing averages um, in the 17s. Um, I think Pete was doing 19 odd upwind a couple of days ago. Um, Pete, which Peter? Pete Burley. Um, but generally you're seeing between sort of 13 at the low end and 17, 18 at the top end. And downwind um, just under 30, sort of 28, 29 knots at full speed, sort of ranging from 22 to 29. And at 28 knots, the top sailor, are you in control? Are you on the edge? And what's a safe number? What's a kind of in control fast um, downwind? And what's scary for you guys? Well, it's all about the sea state. So you can be fully in control at 29, 30 knots as long as there's not a, a massive set of waves in front of you. So, um, yeah, it, it still feels fairly comfortable at, at 28, 29 knots. Um, great, now that you uh, narrowly missed out on winning the Worlds um, yep. just a few months ago to Josh Knight, you'd, you'd led all the way up through the event. Um, how are you gonna avoid that same fate <laughs> in this event? Uh, this one's gonna be much, much harder, actually, um, given that guys like Peter and Nathan and Tom and Ian and everyone else wasn't 
in garter, um, so it's going to be much harder to hold on to the lead, especially if we get sort of stronger breezes for the rest of the week. They're all they're all bigger and fitter than I am, so so it's going to be quite hard to hang on. But we'll see how we go. Take every day as it comes. Well, national international president Scott Babbage, uh, with all your titles, thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.